You're listening to the One Step Deeper Podcast with your host, Jimmy Moore and Brittany Davis. One Step Deeper Podcast.com. What is up, you guys? Welcome to episode 17 of the One Step Deeper Podcast. And we have quite the show for you here today. A little bit different than we normally do. Both Brittany and I had a very busy week and kind of didn't have time to do a brand new episode. But I told her, I said, I've got this idea. We have done now 16 wonderful episodes and we try to drop bombs in every single episode that we think will be helpful to you. So what I have done is compiled some of the best moments of the One Step Deeper podcast so far all into this video here today. So we hope that you enjoy this. As always, go to onestepdeeperpodcast.com for the website. It has all of the information about this show where you can listen on Mondays, uh, where you can view it on YouTube. All of that is still happening. Thank you so much for being here today. I think you're really going to enjoy what we have to share for you today here on One Step Deeper. It's kind of a best of so far. Enjoy the show. We're going to start off these snippets from the best of One Step Deeper podcast with episode one, Welcoming the Chaos. Yes, it becomes your normal. It, it, yes, I have had... And I don't want to get too far off topic and I'm going to go right back to our stories, but I've had this conversation with family members very recently about, they're like, I don't understand why this one family member, you know, she, she's just, she's always drama. She's always looking for drama. And I turned it around real quickly and I said, no, look at it a different way. She developed, she was in chaos her entire life as a, in her childhood. And so that was her comfort zone. Chaos was her comfort zone. So she craves that. Because that's the only way she knows how to function is within drama. And so, yes, it becomes our comfort place. when We have this constant stuff around us, this constant chaos. It becomes our normal. And the thing is, like, then once you get plucked out of that situation and into the real world and on your own, you wonder why everyone else isn't in the chaos. And you're wanting, wondering, oh, my gosh, like, what's wrong with these people? I think about those, and I know people in my life who are are in the midst of, you know, being in a home with narcissists. Yeah. Narcissists. Right. I had a narcissist dad. You had narcissists in your life, you know, and, and then you get out of it. It's like you expect that. It almost draws you to those kind of partners in life and people, relationships, and friends. Yes. Yes, there is definitely a pattern in what we choose for ourselves. And, and, you know, I feel like the talk about childhood just gets, it just gets run over. Like, oh, my childhood was fine. I turned out fine. That's probably one of my most disgusting hearing that, that I hear. Oh, I turned out just fine. Um, But did you, but did you really? I mean, how about all those tendencies to just immediately react to anger? How about this drive that you must have to have drama in your life? Come on now. That that was that was childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not always chalked up to your experiences. Well, that's just the way I am. That one oh, pissed no. me off to no end. Oh, that's just my personality. Just deal with it. I'm like, oh, oh slap the shit out of your personality because it's bad. Oh, gosh, I hate that. That's another one of my things that I just cannot stand. It's, oh, this is just the way I am. And I just want to be like, grow up, grow up. <laughs> yeah, just uh, it's OK to have learned these things, but it's also please unlearn them. In episode two, processing overwhelm and all the things we did in the first episode, they were like, oh, my gosh, that was a lot of practical information along with your stories. And so. This whole asking yourself why thing. Why does that work, Brittany? It makes you go deeper. It make it it just why is such a simple word. And and I will I will warn you why is a dangerous word if it's used in the wrong context. Because if you're sitting here in despair and you're like, why am I like this? And why does life happen to me? And why this? And why? if you're just despair, it's just gonna take you deeper but it's going to take you into despair. 
if you take it the opposite way, when you're in that moment, you're like, okay, why am I feeling this way? And you identify, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Okay, well, why am I feeling that? And you just, you just keep going deeper and deeper until you get to, and specifically yesterday when I was talking the the bonus episode, I was talking about taking it one step deeper to find your why in life. And that's kind of where I'm going with it with, with you yesterday. That's where I was going of, okay, this is happening to you. You know, why do you feel this despair? What is it about this moment? You know, just and just keep taking it that one step deeper. I say that a lot. I don't know. Well, that that is what we're branding here on this show. And we do go one step deeper and a million steps deeper, like we mentioned the last time. But like it's such a profound journey. And thank you for making the clarification that when you ask why it could go a negative or a positive direction. And I think in that realm, you don't ask why, we're gonna go real deep here. Uh, You don't ask why based on your belief of the situation. You go why based on the reality of what's actually happening. And they could be the same, but most of the time they're two different things. And this is gonna get into something Brittany and I are gonna talk a lot about. We're gonna challenge why you believe what you believe. Uh, we did a post on the One Step Deeper podcast Instagram page at One Step Deeper Podcast, uh, as well as over on the Facebook page. You can look it up there. Uh, but we did a post about that where we have all these beliefs, but why do we believe those things? Are they real? Are they are they just things you just always believed and never really challenged? So we're going to try to get you to challenge those beliefs. So when you're asking those why questions, you may do it, be doing it through a belief system that's not valid. So go mm-hmm. that one step deeper, try to get to the truth of the facts of the situation rather than your beliefs. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Episode three, stop shooting yourself. Because trauma, talk to me, model to me, wherever you want to pull it from. Anger is just a response that has been all around my life and so I go there too so I wasn't crying at first when the pain set in I was mad as hell I was like what the actual crap is going on like I thought I was over this it's been a year and so I was so angry and yes you wanted to help me and I should have I should have (laughs) I do so bad I I I, because I I've gotten to see a lot of sides of you, but I had not seen that side of you. And it wasn't that I was work because you're like, I'll say something to you. I said, you can tell you can say anything to me and I will not stop being your friend. Um, And and I know the same on your end. If I said pretty much anything to you, I could think of a couple of things. But no, um, anything to you and you you wouldn't stop being my friend. So it's like when you have that kind of trust in each other. You don't really let work. And I would know the context. She's upset. She's hurting. She's angry. I would know the context. If you called me an asshole or whatever you were going to call me, um, that would be fine. I've heard worse, by the way. So I I hear them on Jimmy rants at the, on my, on my YouTube stream uh, today. I'm okay. (laughs) But like, yeah, I, um, I really wanted to see you in that moment. And and you're right. That is an area of my life that I continue to should myself if I should be angry alone. And it's honestly modeled. I spoke this to you. Um, my dad does that. Um, we actually call it the Barwick temper. Like that's my maiden name. It's literally something in our family where we call it the Barwick temper. And um, we've recognized it within ourselves. And I think the biggest point of growth in my dad and myself is we walk away instead of saying something to the people that we love instead of saying something that we don't mean or saying something out of anger and out of that reaction we walk away and try to grasp it ourselves and then come back and um for me like i said i can speak feelings all day long i can speak rational i can i can rationalize why why i'm feeling the way i am but anger isn't an emotion It's a reaction. And so I try to calm that initial reaction first by walking away and just and break through that tough exterior and 
and then I'll come to you. Then I'll I'll bring you crying, sobbing, broken, frustrated Brittany instead of angry and mad at the world. And that would ultimately, I feel like, and this is probably just in my head and not truth. I feel like I would lash out even at the people that I love, which is why I walk away. And that's a fair statement as to why you do that. But if one is asking for it, the should is out the window at that point. They're asking for it. Give it to them. Yeah, I'm going to remember that. Episode four, how to be around people you don't really like. And we've hammered home family and we're not done with family. We're going to come back to them in a minute. But there are other relationships in our life. Uh, co-workers, I know you're a stay-at-home mom and I work for myself, but most people have co-workers they have to deal with and all the personality things there. And a lot of times, I don't really like these people either. So that's a challenging situation because you don't get to pick your co-workers. Oh, that, that's a really good one because that's not something that you can, I mean, I guess eventually you can walk away. If you're fed up of it enough, you can walk away. But, um, my husband, I'll use my husband as an example. Oh, wild man. Oh, wild man. The stories I have heard from him coming home from work. And uh, you have to know that my husband works very hard and he expects everybody to work as hard as he does. But that doesn't happen because wild man is like a creep, like an alien from another planet. He works so hard and he finds such joy and accomplishment within working. And other people are like, dude, like, slow down. Like, what? what? Uh, and so, he struggles with relationships at work. If they don't work as hard as him, he's like, he'll come home and kind of vent to me about this person or that person. And I, I think it's so sweet because you can't, you can't really get away from them. So again, that's where we circle back to expectations. You kind of just have to lower your standards, lower your expectations and don't expect other people to be you. Yeah. And, and it's something I struggle with quite frankly, because I'm just like your husband. Me and Wild Man are so much alike. Maybe that's why I'm your friend uh, in a lot of ways, because uh, you see a lot of the personality traits that that uh, made make you bonded to him. But yeah, like that hard work thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see how that would irk his coworkers. He's the one that they don't know how to get along with. <laughs> so, so like, is he working on? softening that or at least trying to bridge that so that he can have a better relationship in those coworker people in his life? Yeah. So he's balanced it. Uh, my husband is very, even though he works so hard, he is a big goofball. And like when you very first meet him, he's very quiet. He seems very quiet. He's just, he's observing. You. He's observing how you are. And then he'll play into that. Um, but no, he's very jovial and he'll cut jokes with people all the time. I hear him laughing, and cutting up. So he kind of balances the hard ass side of him of, hey, come on, we got to work with, you know, let's cut up and joke around. And so he and, he and he's that way with our kids. It's so cute to see him do that because uh, that's another one. You can't really pick your kids. <laughs> you don't get to pick those. They get picked for you. Well, let's go there then. Since you have three little munchkins, I have no kids. I've been around kids. Every yeah. kid, it's so funny because every kid I've ever been around is attracted to me for some reason. I guess I give off that kid vibe. Uh, yeah. And I've had nieces and nephews and, and just people's kids that they'll climb all over me and I'll play and I'll make, Mommy, Archie, when I talk. And it just like, it just is an attraction. But kids, that's another one that's a dynamic of, Sometimes you don't like these people and you've got three beautiful little girls, but sometimes you don't like those people. <laughs> sometimes they have some sass, some sass. And uh, uh, I don't like calling my kids assholes. I don't really get on that vibe, but I do think it's cute. The little shirts that they be wearing, sass hole. I, you know, that's funny. It's, it's funny. It's a joke. Um, but no, I don't really like, I don't like participating in that trend. Um, I think when it comes to kids, it's so important that we stop putting expectations on them to be anything more than a kid, right. to have any other desire than to sit in their room and watch TV. Like, like I, there's this 
And I had so many expectations put on me as a child of do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, have the, have these grades. They need to be perfect. Make sure your room's always clean. And, and so I've lowered my kids are, are disciplined. So when I say, all right, come on, it's time to clean up. And they'll say, oh, I'm watching TV. Okay, finish up the episode, then let's clean up. I don't expect them to move right away because, you know, if you're in the middle of doing something, you don't want to stop. So let me get to a stopping point that I'm coming. And when it comes to my kids, they all have little attitudes. They all have their own little quirks, but I know this about them. My Kimberly, she's my oldest. She's very wild. She's she's loud and, and boisterous. And she reminds me so much of my mother-in-law who we fought for years. Or me and my mother-in-law fought for years. We're finally on a place where we love each other and we call each other and we laugh and joke around and we have a good relationship now, but it did not start that way. Um, but my daughter is very much like that. And so to have that constantly in the house, I'm a chill person. Like I just I just want to chill. I just want to be quiet. I'll have a deep conversation with you, but I'll bounce around, jump around. Whew, that's hard for me. And so we balance it out with, I'll do a little crazy with her and then she'll chill a little bit with me and just kind of, kind of balance that out. But I don't expect her to be me. I can't. I don't expect all my grace to be me. I don't like to touch. Nor should they be you. Right. But that's what happens in that parent relationship sometimes that we expect our children to be like us and especially like to expect them to be like an adult. That's too high of an expectation. Kids are kids. Yeah, and, and back to your husband and his coworkers, like his expectation is, dang it, I work hard. You need to work your ass off too. What's wrong with you? And he's putting that expectation on them in much the same way. Yes, absolutely. Episode five, you can't change what you hate. Nope. Yes, because I've done it so hard to myself that I can recognize it very quickly in other people. And I never, ever want other people to experience what I've experienced with how much self-loathing I've carried over the years. How much awareness do you think people have that they're hating on themselves? Because I think sometimes it becomes so normal that you don't even recognize you're doing it. Yes. It's, it's literally taught to us. It's something that you just... You just do. I mean, when you look on TV and maybe not someone is going, oh, you should hate yourself. It's never that. It's these subliminal messages of you're not good enough. Um, one that we hear often, um, it just popped in my head, is, oh, you'd be so much prettier if you lost weight. Oh. You know? and, and that's one of those backhanded things that, that people say and that teaches you to hate yourself when you hear something like that. Because that's basically them saying, well, you'd be so much more worthy if you were smaller. And so it's literally taught to us. These things are said over and over and over again of, oh, you have such a pretty face. And implying that your body is ugly. You know, we hear these things. It's taught to us. I wonder how much of that then you hear those things and then those things get reinforced by your own beliefs and then you hear someone else say something and then that it just becomes this gets buried deeper and deeper and deeper into your subconscious to the point that then it becomes who you are and people identify it. that's who I am because everybody says it. And I say it about myself and all these people say it, it must be true. Nobody's refuting it anywhere. So it has to be true. Yes, absolutely. And I've hated myself. I hated myself for so long that it affected my relationships. So my mother-in-law is an extremely confident person. And I have since learned to love and accept her right where she is. And I've just let a little bit of Mary rub off of me because I needed a little bit of it. But she doesn't hold self-hate. She's been through hell in her life. And she's like, hell yeah, I've been through that. And I'm strong as hell. And, and she's just, she's just a bad bitch. I love Mary. Um, but I haven't always because I was jealous of her. I was jealous of that because I just hated myself so much no matter which way I turned and which way I looked. And so hating yourself, it can't feel change. What else has it 
It can destroy your relationships around you. It can destroy how other people see themselves. Like hate is just this fuel that fuels the wrong kind of fire. Well, and it's it's an energy, so I guess we get fueled by that. Episode six, understanding the nine Enneagram personality types. A little bit of anything to be able to condemn them. Does me, does me, okay. And I've had some issues in that area, <laughs> but we worked through it and I'm now recognizing like the more I learn about your Enneagram and why you tick, it's like, oh, okay, well that explains why when I said like a little something about you could improve if you, and you're like, ah! Yes, that that's telling a, a type one that they can improve in an area is basically stabbing them with a knife. Even if it's truth, even if they do need improvement, they already know that they do. And it just really sucks to have anybody else point it out to them. And it was good uh, for me to, feel the wrath of that back. Not that you were ugly to me, but just, I could feel that, oh crap, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but I did it with good intention. So it wasn't like I was trying to harm you in that. In fact, I had to articulate that to you. I'm on your side, Brittany. Like, I am not against you. I'm really trying to make you better. And, da, 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 da. and you're like, yeah, I got this, bro. <laughs> So a couple of um, famous people that people know that are type ones, um, Confucius, Plato, and, um, oh, I wrote one more somewhere. Oh, Gandhi. There you go. So those are kind of your other type ones. Confucius, Plato, and Gandhi. Is there a normal, not godly, uh, super smart person on that list? Is there like Jennifer Aniston or something? Oh. No, there wasn't. Like, I was looking at this list going, they're going to think I'm super self-righteous and I'm yeah. not trying to be like this on the list. <laughs> Plato, Confucius, Gandhi, Brittany Davis. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Episode seven. Be the real you. Why authenticity matters. Don't want to do that. I don't have many more years left on this earth enough, but not enough to go, well, I'll just keep hiding. I'll keep hiding. No, I, I want to live and thrive and people that are my tribe will come to me. People who aren't can go away and do whatever they want to do, live their sheltered mask filled life, but I'm going to be me and take me or leave me. Um, nobody has enough time. Nobody has enough time to play that game. Like we all, and I know last year was really a catalyst for me to become this version of myself. Last year, anybody else just feel like 2020 was a major catalyst in I don't give a flying you know what anymore. Like, I just cannot care. I love you, but I, I cannot um, be anything but the real me. And I know 2021 shaping up to be the same way. Just I just cannot. I can't. And I won't. Like you said, I won't. I've craved real and authenticity for so long in my life. And this talk can go so deep within religion, within family construct, with all of that, with relationships with spouse, with relationships with children. Like I have just blown the lid off of all of those and some more of, you know, when it comes to religion. No, I'm going to be myself. I'm not fitting into a box. I have my own beliefs. I've developed my own things. Episode eight. You don't have to. You get to. Yeah. I need to do this more with my to-do list. If I get to do these things and I get to learn through everyday experiences. Man, this is awesome. And you are. You, you're doing that. I talk to you often and I, I hear that in your verbiage. So, it's a process. It's not an overnight thing. You're not just going to suddenly switch from have to get and all your worries go away. No, it's kind of you're going to be clunky along the way. And we've even heard it here out of your voice today uh, on this podcast. You know what another big have to ism is, is if you have extra weight on the body, you have to lose weight. And like people put that on themselves, but society puts that on them, too. You know, and quite frankly, I get it all the time. 
oh, well, you're obviously not eating keto anymore, so you have to figure out some way to lose weight. And I'm thinking, all right, number one, how do you know I'm not eating that way anymore? How do you know I'm not pursuing things to try to make that happen? How do you know my health is bad? So it's like the have to-ism assumes a lot of things. Oh, absolutely. You know what they say about assuming? Ask you me. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and we put that on ourselves. I have gained what I consider a significant amount of weight from 2020 hospitalization, all the uh, and I had been working on trying to lose weight, but you can't really lose weight in a stressful state. But I put it on myself because I'm not the smallest that I've ever been. So I have to lose weight to get back to that. And I, that's something that I have put on myself, this expectation that I've put on myself. But what does it do? It just sets us up for more failure. And that have to is um, uh, it, it sets you up for failure, I think. Have to also feels like it's being forced because yeah. you, you have to force it. When you say get to, it's free will. You're making the choice. Now, one year ago today, was it forced on you? Yeah. But in the aftermath of the have to be in the hospital, you then got to recover. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And it's been a really long recovery. <laughs> Uh, and but girl, you are far better place today. You even admit that to yourself. Uh, but even the have toism still creeps in because you expect to be back where you were uh, yesterday, a year ago. Oh yes, 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 absolutely. That is, yeah. Those expectations hit hard too. They do. Episode nine, turning your pain into purpose. Something uh, that has you stuck and not in striving to thriving, then it's holding you back and it's pain that's preventing you from achieving your purpose. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And we can take that so many different levels, but pain can look like so many different things. And like you were saying, you, you can never compare traumas. That's not something that I ever, don't ever do that. Never compare what you're going through to somebody else. You can maybe compare something that you're going through to something that you've already been through. Like, yeah, you can compare yourself to yourself. Never compare yourself to anybody else and what they're going through. And, oh, I wish I was like them. Don't ever say those words. Don't don't because you have no idea what they went through to be the person that they are y'all the people that be messaging me telling me they want to be like me i'm like hold up don't wait, don't put that in the universe you don't want to put that out there as her best friend no you don't <laughs> <laughs> no no take it back take it back I, i'm just pretending like you didn't say that he's wonderful on camera and all the work you, you are wonderful by the way i'm not disparaging you but she has her moments, let's just put it that way, but the little polished version that you see on One Step Deeper, yeah, I see the other side. <laughs> yes, yes, I think to be as deep as you and I go, to be able to do that, you have to tap into all of those emotions, yeah. and I feel things so hard. I feel things so deep and so hard that... Uh, that's where all the inspiration comes from. I have to tap into that. And so I get a little emotional and kind of get stuck there for a bit. Well, and that's a great point too, of this whole concept of turning the pain into purpose. Look at the pain and as hard as it is going through it, whatever it is in your life, you can define pain physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, however you want to define it. And you've got this pain in the moment you're not seeing, it, but there is a reason you've gone through that at least there's a reason you can tell yourself that you've gone through that because of life circumstances leading to something else happening and eventually headed towards your purpose and so i think anyone who's been through pain you can turn that into purpose by seeing the bigger picture of it all in the midst of it and you and i've had conversations with you being right in the midst of it i'm like ten thousand foot view what's it gonna look like from from there not not right here what, what's it look like from there and you're like damn it yeah i can see that and it just it changes everything and it 
it fast forwards you from survival uh, and surviving into striving for thriving um, right. and get there and having that purpose sooner than later. Episode 10, happiness is not always your final destination. Of, I'm, I want to be here. I want to be happy. I want to be that person, but I can't go from the lowest of lows and jump all the way there. And so to just take this step and I, weight loss is just easy for me. If you're looking in the mirror and you don't like what your body looks like, please stop seeing negativity over yourself. You're never going to get to that place of happiness in your body by continuing to feed negativity to it. You just won't. And so if you can't be happy about what your body looks like right now, that's okay. Just be neutral. Just say, this is my body. It, is ha it has supported me through trauma. It has supported me through a pandemic. It has supported me through all the choices that I've made to feed it. It supported me through a surgery. It supported me through all these things. And I don't like what it looks like right now. I can't be happy about what it looks like, but I'm thankful for my body and I have gratitude for my body. And what I hear you saying is it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what's happening, uh, who's doing what to whom and da, 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 all the kind of nonsense that we put the blame and onus on for why we're unhappy. At the end of the day, it becomes this, what do I choose to feel despite these circumstances? And we talk about this a lot, you guys, here on One Step Deeper, is you actually really have the most control over how you feel than anybody. Like, you can blame it on a parent, you can blame it on a spouse, you can blame it on kids, blame it on coworkers. But at the end of the day, it's on you. You are the one that gets to decide how you feel, how you respond, whether you think happy is going to make you truly happy or not. And whether you stay stuck in your malaise when you're deep down, dark, depressed, and calling your best friend going, ah, 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 ah. and that's me calling Brittany, by the way. <laughs> or me calling Jimmy. Hey, it goes the other way too, okay? So, yes, people hate when I point this out. They really hate this, and I don't need to be or come across as rude. The things that have happened to you in your past, I am sorry that they happened to you. They were hard, and I'm sorry that you went through that. But you can choose to be better, or you can choose to be bitter, and it's all a choice. You get a choice in how you react. No one can make you angry. No one can make you feel anything. You choose to feel the feels that you feel. That was a lot. Um, and I'm all about feeling the feels. That's literally my tagline. Like, I'm all about it. Feel what you feel, but recognize where it comes from and recognize that you get, you have the power. Stop putting the power in other people's hands. When you say, oh, they made me angry. No, you're giving them the power. You chose to be angry. That's the truth of it. You chose to be angry. And so when Episode 11, how to get unstuck. But the point is. The more I let go of all of the things that were holding me back and the more I get unstuck, the more people that I find like that, the more people that I find, you know, like you, you have helped me so many times. I don't know how many times I've been on the phone with Jimmy. He's like, what are you worried about? Like, uh, OK, hold on. Let me help you out of this. And it almost takes you as a surprise that I'm even thinking those thoughts because you see my potential. Well, and I don't. That you've articulated the answers already previously to me. And I'm thinking, mirror, look, talk to self because you know all the answers. Yes. And it's good to have those people in your life who can just hold on. I hear you talking. Let me pull your mirror out. Like, it's really good to have those people in your life. And I think I could read a post that you just wrote and go, OK, so um. Brittany says that you need to feel the feels and stay neutral in your emotion. That it, and you're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't, tutty, I, I'm trying to think of the word, not fruity tooty, but I don't just like luddy duddy. There's the word. I don't like luddy duddy a post. Like if I write a post, I'm feeling it. It's something that I'm going through right now. And oftentimes it's me giving advice to myself when I write a post. Like that's well, just. All right. That's the dirty little secret of most of us that write posts. By the way, you can say tutti frutti. Tutti frutti. Uh, <laughs> is we write it for ourselves and we hope it encourages other people and, and helps other people. So that's kind of the secret to really good writing is 
all right, that homeboy or homegirl has gone through some stuff and they need to talk to themselves. Yeah, it's been really fun the last, I would say, a year. And it just has slowly, like I was stuck here and stuck in a rut back here. And slowly and slowly and slowly, the more I keep going, the more I get unstuck from where I was, I'm just like, whoa, I'm a writer. I like this. because Episode 12, how to respect each other's beliefs. Every time someone's like, I would love to be like you, I'm like, don't wish that. Yeah, don't, don't, we- don't wish that. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. But like we, you and I, people find our friendship very strange because we are two very different people at different points in life. Um, and people are like, how do you two connect? Why, why is your bond so strong? Because you obviously like each other as friends and, and you're always supportive of each other. I said, it's because we respect each other's differences. And like in the world we're living in now, nobody respects anybody anymore. It's almost like if you believe differently than me, you're my enemy. And I'm like, you and I butt heads on a lot of issues. But instead of going like this and, oh, I hate you because you believe differently than me, I go, ooh, yes, let's dig into that. Why do you believe that? And you've done the same thing to me. I'll say something online. You're like, cringe, call Jimmy. All right, what do you mean by this? And we have really good conversations about that. And I think that's brought us together even stronger every time we do that. Yeah, and I see, I crave that. I crave getting to know the why behind people believe what they believe, but oftentimes they don't know why they believe it. They just believe it because somebody told them to believe it, but that's a whole nother podcast. Um, But yes, this idea that we have to clash because we believe differently. I just think that that's, it's just flawed. You don't have to look the same, be the same, be the same gender, be the same age. Jimmy and I are like the perfect example of complete opposites on most things. I think the only thing we really mesh like is the fact that we are willing to hear each other out. We are willing to understand that, hey, you believe differently than I believe. That doesn't make you bad. That doesn't make you wrong. That doesn't make anything bad there it's just the fact you believe this way I believe this way cool but I want to know why you know I love I love that that's how we grow as human beings we get to that deeper reason I mean literally our podcast was born out of this idea that you believe one way I believe one way and we just keep going deeper of hey why do you believe that sometimes I have found personally when you get to that why and people are like "Hmm, I wonder why they actually don't believe what they believe Yeah. And I mean, you and I, uh, like you said, have very different beliefs in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, we have some similar, like we bonded over keto, keto Mm -hmm. is how we met. Uh, Then we bonded over trauma. So we have that in common. Yours was a very different trauma than mine, but trauma is trauma is trauma is trauma. And so that really strongly, those two things just went, yep, yep, we're going to be bonded. And then I started episode 13 reparenting ourselves exactly i think that describes mine and your relationship or even the relationship that i've had with my husband of i like it but this is unfamiliar i don't know what it feels like you and i've had this disconnect where you enjoy praise i cannot stand it i i i cannot accept it there's probably one area where i can accept praise that's within parenting I, I do know how to say thank you if somebody compliments my parenting but other than that i cannot take a compliment i can't and that's habitual learned thought processes from back as a child because i didn't get that i didn't and anytime i got a praise it was always like a backhanded praise well good job but you definitely could do better and it was just like this I never accepted it. Right. Kind of like the all hundreds on your report card in 197 and they get mad because you got a 97. That, that, that puts an unrealistic expectation on you to have a very high level of achievement that you could never accomplish in the real world. Right. And that brings me into like these four ways to, to really know if you need to be reparented. So. I would dare to say five. Um, five is number one, you're a human being. That that's it. But like, you're a human being, you need to be reparented. Like it's literally that simple. I think that applies yeah. today. So. Yes, exactly. You you need this. Um, but 
you, you can't keep promises to yourself. You start things over and over and over again and you never finish them. Well, that's learned in childhood. That's that's for whatever ever reason that's learned in childhood. Another one is um, you repeat unhealthy cycles in mm-hmm. your life. Maybe you had an unhealthy relationship with your parents. You repeat that in every relationship, friendships, um, spousal relationships, partners, things like that. Diet, because how many of us have gone on diets where we have the mentality of what we went through the last time? Well, this is going to fail, so I might as well give up before I start. And we wonder why keto didn't work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Another one is you struggle with perfectionism. That's me. That's me. I'm talking to myself. Struggle with perfectionism, this idea that you must be perfect and show up perfect in your life. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that has to be reparented. And lastly, um, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying um, when you unknowingly self-sabotage. And again, I don't like the word self-sabotage. You're really just trying to protect yourself. Yeah. And that goes into the diet of this is something that you're not used to. Your body is not used to. Your mindset is not used to. And so it feels like an attack, even though it may be a growth thing, it feels like an attack. And so, and it's pushing you outside of your comfort zone. And that, that feels like, Oh, I got to protect myself. And so sabotage is not actually sabotaging yourself. It's you're protecting yourself. And so any of those things that's a pattern in your life, you need to be reparenting. You need to go through this process of reparenting yourself. Episode 14. You don't have to live your life for anyone but you. People get hung up on trying to grab back the reins if they if they recognize they're living their life for other people and the beliefs of other people that have been infused into them through words and actions. They don't want to know what they're about to find out. Like, I think there's such a fear of kind of living authentically in your own self. I know we did a whole episode many uh, weeks ago, Be The Real You, and it's the same kind of concept of people don't really want to be the real them always. That sounds so weird because you would think, oh yeah, yeah, I do, I'm me. And then like you stop and evaluate every aspect of your life, everything that you believe. Is it what you believe? Is it what you want to do? Your example with the college thing, you were pushed to that and you never wanted to do that. Um, and, and so like that, that's a prime example. And those kinds of things happen over and over and over again throughout all of life. It's because it's easy to follow a leader because you can default to the leader. Oh, I didn't. Do, oh, I'm wrong. No, they're wrong because they told me I'm wrong. And so it's a lot easier to just follow suit of somebody who told you to be a certain way, think a certain way. And I can't help but like, I uh, think of religion within this, that people just sit under one person and don't follow through in their own. They're just like, well, so-and-so said this. And so I believe it. I did that like within my, you know, faith, I just succumbed to what other people told me. And when I actually stepped out of those boxes and I was like, well, where did that come from? And the truth is it came from this person and this person and this person and this person. And there was no validity there. It was just passed down through all these years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have been living my life for this person, like way over there because they started this idea and it's not, it's not real. And it's scary, man. I know you've gone through the same thing. It is so scary to get there. And you're like, what have I been doing my whole life? This is terrible. But you just accept where you are like, okay, well, I'm going to take that as a fact, a very shocking fact that I've lived my life for somebody else. And what do I feel about this? What do I feel about this situation or or this topic? Episode 15, The Blame Game, Why Individual Responsibility Matters. Something horrible happened. Listen, Jimmy went through childhood trauma. I went through childhood trauma. Jimmy was beat by his dad. I had sexual uh, things go on that shouldn't have went on. I mean, we went through some stuff as some kids, but it's still our responsibility to take what happened to us and and grow from it and learn from it. And listen, I don't really like the idea of, of that thought of my trauma made me stronger. Is there truth there? But you weren't supposed to be strong. You were supposed to be loved and supported and cared for. Like you, that wasn't the goal. And so I find and have sympathy for those who go through things similar to you and I have. But at the same time, you have to grab that 
pick up the pieces of your life and begin to move on and piece those things back together. Go to therapy, listen to podcasts, read books, learn what you can to outgrow, outwit, outlast, outplay the life game and stop blaming other people in situations for where you are right now. Because the truth is, these things and these choices that other people have done and the situation may have gotten you to where you are right now. But if you are going anywhere else, it's on you. Nobody else can take yeah. you there. And finally, last week's episode 16, you have a choice in how you react in any given situation. Choose how you react and to react to any given situation calmly. Well, I think it's for your own sake. I think yes. your own mental health needs that because once we make ourselves get upset, that actually, from a physiological standpoint, shifts you into this sympathetic nervous system and you get stressed and you start having the tightness and you're upset and then you gain weight and you have all these things happening. You're like, what in the world? So by choosing these other things, you're letting all that stuff go and you're freeing yourself. Now you might think, well, they deserve to hear what I have to say. Maybe, but, or, you can reframe the message. You, you know how many people like write me and they chose to say the ugliest, nastiest things. I'm currently in the midst of a very long fast and some guy, I posted about it, I'm doing a 40 day fast and he said, well, maybe hopefully by the end of this, you'll finally look like a keto advocate. So he made that choice that that was the right thing. Yeah, that really happened, Brittany. Her mouth is wide open, you guys. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, so that kind of stuff. So he chose to do that. And I could have chosen to be just as ugly back. Yeah. Um, or I could choose to delete and block. Or I could just ignore it. And, and so all of us have choices. You make the choice about how you res respond to any given situation. Um, and, but it still doesn't mean you can't feel hurt along the way. People think if I feel hurt, I have permission to lash back at like somebody like that. And no, no, because at the end of the day, that's going to impact you more than it will them. Yeah, it's going to re it's going to affect your relationships. If, and and I'm, again, we're not saying that you can't be hurt by something. We're not saying that you can't have emotions. We're saying that those emotions don't have to dictate how you act. And I think there's so much power in the revelation that is you can choose. Thanks so much for watching this very special edition of the One Step Deeper podcast. As always, go to onestepdeeperpodcast.com. You can get all the information about this podcast. Brittany and I will be back next week with a brand new episode talking about vulnerability. So you won't want to miss that. Thanks so much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next week. One Step Deeper Podcast.com.